Good morning and greetings to you in Jesus' name, my brothers and sisters in the Lord and fellow laborers for Jesus Christ. Uh, it's Monday morning. Uh, just a recap from yesterday, Great Plains Apostolic Church. We had a Holy Ghost throwdown. Uh, God moved during the worship service. Worship service lasted uh, 30, 35 minutes probably. Um, we had an altar service right in the middle of worship service. God just poured out his spirit mightily. Uh, we had a couple people get prayed back through and get renewed and refilled with the Holy Ghost. We had one young lady on the verge of receiving the Holy Ghost. Um, we just saw such a great response in worship and prayer and crying out to God uh, that I, I just felt so encouraged. We had a tongue, uh, tongues and interpretation. Um, the Holy Ghost just moved from beginning to end, and uh, we're just excited about it. And I hope and pray that you had a uh, great church yesterday as well. And um, I'm praying for you and for your ministries and uh, for what God is doing in your life. Let me say this before I begin my thought this morning. The best is yet to come. It really is. The best is yet to come. And um, the greatest revival in the history of mankind has not happened yet. It is yet to come. And I want you to understand that, and I want you to hide that in your mind and hide that in your heart and know that you know that you know, have that, have that issue settled uh, in your spirit that the best is yet to come. And God is going to use you if you will avail yourself to him, uh, really lock tight your walk and your relationship with God, tighten it up. Uh, give yourself to consistent daily prayer, regular fasting, uh, get in the Word of God, read and study on a daily basis. Uh, just be uh, sensitive to the Holy Ghost. Allow God to fill you with a fresh burden for souls because this, this is all about souls. That's all ministry is about. It's about souls. And so uh, if you will do that, and, and uh, as Brother Lee Stone King often says, consistency, thou art a jewel. You know, if I uh, pray for a week and, and fast twice during that week, and, uh, and I read the Bible every day, every single day, and then uh, I don't touch my Bible and I don't pray or fast for another couple months, that week didn't do me much good. Uh, it's consistency. That's why Jesus said, uh, whoever's going to follow him must take up their cross daily. The scripture emphasizes the word daily and follow him. So living for God is a daily commitment. Uh, disciple uh, and discipline, they, they come from the same origin, root word. And so to be a disciple of Jesus Christ by uh, merit implies spiritual discipline. So if we will be disciplined in our walk and our relationship with God, and we are consistent in that, God will use us, God will anoint us, and uh, God will work in and through your lives to reach souls. It, it's all about souls. That's all it's about. Amen. Now, the best is yet to come. You remember that I told you that. Now I'm going to share with you something and you might be skeptical. I was skeptical several months ago whenever um, this really started being proclaimed. I was skeptical. I'll just be plain out honest with you. But the theme and the heartbeat of the Holy Ghost is being repeated almost daily and weekly. And uh, I, I don't, uh, I'm one of these people, okay, that um, just because someone says they're a prophet, just because someone says that they're a man of God, just because someone says that God gave them a dream or a vision, um, okay. Uh, the Bible says in these last days that, that that's going to happen. But um, I, I don't just uh, believe everybody. Uh, you know, uh, I apply some caution. I tend to treat things as more credible 
whenever it comes from people with some corn in the crib. You, you know what I'm saying? Seasoned ministers that have been around the block a time or two, and they've, they have made full proof of their ministry, like Paul told Timothy. Make full proof of your ministry. So they've got the evidence and the fruit of their labors for the Lord, and they've established some credibility and uh, believability. And so whenever something from God keeps coming out repeatedly from people like that with corn in the crib, I take notice and I pay attention. And what I'm about to share with you, you might already have heard it, but I'm going to share it with you. And you might say, well, what does this have to do with uh, apostolic ministry and mentorship and spiritual growth? Quite a bit, actually. And I just encourage you again, the best is yet to come. If we had the time today, and we don't, I don't want to take up your time. I've, I've got to go to work here in just a few minutes. But if we had the time today, I would take you through the scriptures and I would, I would show you why I believe wholeheartedly that the rapture of the church is going to take place before the Great Tribulation. If we had the time today, I would take you to the scripture and show you why I believe wholeheartedly that the Antichrist is not coming from the West. It's going to come straight out of ancient Babylon or modern-day Iraq. And the one world government that, that the Antichrist is going to try to implement is Islam. But we don't have time to go there today. These are things that I believe with all my heart and that I see in Scripture. But what I do want to show with you, share with you is that the church will go through some perilous times and some tribulation. Not the Great Tribulation, but Tribulation. There's a difference. But the best is yet to come. I want you to keep repeating that to yourself, and I want you to keep hiding that in your heart, and I, I need you to know that you know that you know, okay? Now, again, if you're skeptical about what I'm about to say, that's okay. I'm just, I'm sounding the trumpet, if you will, because you need to know how to... Uh, Prepare yourself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and yes, physically, in order to be able to enter into the season we're about to go into. Because on the back end of this, God is going to give us the greatest revival in the history of mankind. John chapter 9 and verse number 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Notice what he says here. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Without belaboring the point and dragging this, dragging this out this morning, I'm just going to share with you what's on my heart I've been sharing this with my family. I've been sharing this with our local church congregation. And today I'm going to share this with you. Uh, we're about to go through some dark seasons as a nation and as a world. And Jesus is saying repeatedly through men of God who have corn in the crib that he is going to bring the United States of America to her knees. And it's going to cause great fear throughout the globe because of what is going to happen on United States soil. And life is about to drastically change. Now, how long is this going to last? We don't know. We don't know. But Jesus himself is saying repeatedly through men of God that have proven ministry, they've made full proof of their ministry, they have corn in the crib, that he's about to bring some serious things upon our nation and upon our world that is going to bring this great country to her knees. And I'm going to read some of this for you real quickly. Brother David Bernard is the General Superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church International. I, I don't hold my credentials with the UPC. I, I did many, many years ago. Uh, but I still have a lot of respect for that organization and and for Brother David Bernard in particular. I have many of his books, uh, a lot of it by default because way back when I had my license with them, it was default 
uh, reading. It was required reading. Um, but I have a lot of respect for him. And the fact that he stood up at general conference this past week and proclaimed, he read a prophecy to the general assembly and he said it with full faith, full confidence, and uh, even acknowledged that he believes it with all of his heart. The fact that Brother David Bernard said that, that's some corn in the crib. That's, that leans some credibility and believability to this. But he is not the first, and he is not the only one to share this prophecy God is revealing this to pastors and evangelists and prophets and teachers throughout the apostolic church. Uh, all organizations, God's consistent in his message through the Holy Ghost. And uh, he's given people dreams, he's given people visions, he's given people uh, foresight of what is about to happen and occur. So here's what Brother Bernard read at General Conference this last week verbatim my son this is god speaking to to the man of god he says my son i will send a devastation on the united states the like of which has never been experienced the devastation will come with destruction multiplied times over and the people will tremble. I feel the Holy Ghost right now, my God. I will do this to bring the nation to its knees. Even the kings of the earth shall be clothed in fear. The entire population of the United States will then know the paths of treachery their leaders have traveled to destroy the faith of so many. My people who are called by my name will be tried severely. But my purpose will be to show myself to be their God even before I come to gather them to me. But the end is not yet. This will take place just prior to my return. And I will use this devastation to cause many spiritual prodigals who have turned away from me to return and reconsecrate their lives to me. And many who have left the love of righteousness and the gospel to realign their principles. Also, I will bring multitudes to know me because at that time there will be a revelation that all men everywhere will know that I am the only Lord God. Somebody say, my God. Jesus has been giving this for over a year to apostolic ministers all over the place. I've heard it, and when I first heard it, I was skeptical. I was doubtful. But when you start seeing the caliber of people like Brother David Bernard that the Holy Ghost moves upon and they're sharing the same message that starts to lend some serious credibility to this. On September the 11th of this year, evangelist Robin Johnson, he's with the United Pentecostal Church International, tremendous preacher, mighty man of God. He received this prophecy from the Lord and it says, you are my people. You are as Joseph and as he prepared, you must prepare. This is a space of grace that I have given you. I have given you a time. I have given you a moment. Prepare yourself for what is coming. Make yourself ready. Make yourself strong. Make yourself ready in prayer. Seek me. Put my word in you and your little ones, for dark days are coming, but I am making you my spectacle. I will use you, but you must prepare now. 
Prepare now while you have plenty, for there is coming a day of famine, famine from my word and famine in my presence. But ye shall be, I feel the Holy Ghost right now, as those in Goshen, and I will be with you, and you will be with me, for I am coming soon, and you must prepare yourself, saith the Lord. Jesus said, I must work while it is day, because the night is coming when no man can work. Life in the United States and life in our world today is about to change in the coming several months. What we've been accustomed to, life as we know it, it's about to change. And so God keeps reiterating this theme and this message. And so I share it with you today because as a part of apostolic mentorship and training for ministry, I need you to understand that this is not some charlatan scheme that some fly-by-night charismatic preacher is trying to instill fear into people, but these are people like Brother David Bernard and other credible men of God that God is showing what is about to happen on the United States of America and across our world. Brother Robin Johnson has revealed some things that God showed him in prayer. And, oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. These are some things that are going to happen in the near future over the next several months, through the election, and in the coming year to two years. We don't know how long this period of darkness is going to last, but Jesus tells us to prepare. What I've been telling my family, what we're doing, and what I've been telling my church is that you need to stock up on some shelf-stable food and, and bottled water. You need to have some batteries and some flashlights. You need to have a means to be able to cook without electricity. You need to have an emergency escape plan, and you probably need to have a gun to protect your family and your home. Somebody says, I don't believe in guns, but Jesus said, the person that don't have a sword, go and buy one. I'm here to tell you that darkness is coming. And this famine that the Holy Ghost keeps emphasizing. Uh, a man of God recently showed, shared with me, and he, he didn't even hear this prophecy yet. He said that God showed him a famine of food in our land and that God showed him people fighting and physically assaulting one another, even unto death, in the aisles of the grocery stores, fighting over what was barely left on the shelves. There's going to be great violence, there's going to be great desperation, and there's going to be great panic and fear, because people are going to be hungry, they're going to be doing without, and it's going to be perilous, dangerous times. And so you need to be able to prepare your family and you need to be able to take care and defend your family. These are some things that the Holy Ghost has shown Brother Johnson and others, but these are some things Brother Johnson has specifically shared. The election will be contested, obviously. Trump will win re-election, but the Democrats will not accept it, and the anarchy and the violence will continue at escalated levels. There's going to be a health scare for Joe Biden. He's going to suffer a second stroke. The lockdowns and quarantines will continue, and a new mystery virus will be discovered. This new virus will be more deadly, presumably, than COVID-19. Home invasions will be on the rise in high-income neighborhoods, and looters will grow very desperate. More banks will merge with the world banking system amid global economic crisis. So this is the whole world being affected here. New York and Chicago will be rocked by terrorist attacks. NASA prepares for a close call from an approaching asteroid. Curfews continue as martial law will be implemented and extended. More high-profile arrests will be made in child trafficking. More health issues will be uh, seen with Nancy Pelosi. 
churchgoers will have to go underground as church shootings increase. More aftershocks in California halt recovery efforts of a mega earthquake. China and the United States will be on the brink of starting World War III. It doesn't say we will go into World War III, but it says we will escalate to that level. Terrorist attacks on American grid linked to China. There's going to be an attack on the electric and the power grid of the United States. There are nine stations I read recently in Forbes magazine that are not very heavily defended, but if all nine of these stations are attacked and put offline, the whole nation from coast to coast, north to south, east to west, loses power. It's all gone. Cell phones gone. The ability for the water pumps and the, and the water purification plants to pump water to your house, gone. Electricity, gone. The ability to refrigerate and freeze and cook and reheat food using electricity, gone. Anything tied to electricity, gone. Uh, and so God is showing us here that there's going to be an attack on the American power grid from China. Crop contamination increases and f increases the food shortage in America. Volcanic ashes continue to rise and cities become darkened. Farewell to the Democratic Party. The DNC will be dismantled and will split into a brand new faction. And finally, AI patrolling robots will be implemented to replace humans as policemen in certain cities as part of the defund police. John chapter 16 and verse 33 says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Luke 22 and 35 through 36, and he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and without script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his script, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Scary times, perilous times. Amen. Tribulation is about to come on the United States of America and it's going to rock the world. Jesus is telling us to prepare, not out of fear, but so that we can be ready. Amen. Because Jesus is going to bring the United States to her knees. Matthew 6 and 31 through 34, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I believe a lot of people, when, when all this happens and the electricity goes out and the famine and the food shortages hits the nation at escalated levels, I think a lot of people are going to try to run. Only there won't be anywhere to run to. This sounds to me like a situation where we're going to have to hunker down and shelter in place. And we're going to have to have faith in God. The events that are going to occur across the United, United States and the world are not to destroy us, but rather to bring us to our knees as God calls us to the greatest revival in the history of mankind. The prophecy says backsliders are going to return to the Lord in droves and unsaved friends and family members and loved ones are going to turn their hearts to the Lord and believe. God is allowing these things to come to pass because we have become a nation of idol worship. I'm not against sports, but I don't care about sports. I don't follow sports. But some people need to be delivered from football and basketball and hockey and NASCAR because they worship it. 
They they sit down and they spend hours watching that stuff, but they never read their Bible and they never bend their knees to pray. And they excuse it by saying we have to have some kind of hobby or outlet as a stress reliever. But let me tell you something. Our nation has become a nation of idol worship. And God says, I'm going to bring America to her knees to turn her back to me. God is moving on our nation one more time to turn the men, the hearts of men and women back to him before the rapture of the church. Make no mistake that this is not the great tribulation. We have to go through this period of darkness and tribulation in order to have the greatest revival in the history of mankind. Amen. And when this is all over, when this is all over, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. We will all assemble back together in our churches and worship God like never before and have a hallelujah time. I believe that a lot of people are going to be baptized in Jesus' name. Our altars are going to be full of people coming to repentance. And people are going to be receiving the Holy Ghost all across America. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, I'm going to bring his country to her knees. Amen. And so uh, we, while we don't need to fear, while we need to trust God, and we know that he will supply all of our need according to his riches and glory, that does not negate or excuse us from our obligation to prepare. Jesus expressly tells us through the prophecy from Brother Bernard and all these other men of God, prepare yourselves, prepare yourselves, not just spiritually, but make sure that your family has some things to get you through this period of darkness. It's going to be dangerous to go to the grocery store. I believe that uh, the gas stations will probably uh, be without fuel. The trucks won't be able to go coast to coast delivering uh, stuff. Uh, lawlessness and looting and rioting is going to be unprecedented. It's going to be dangerous to be out and about. So you're going to have to hunker down at home and you're going to have to shelter in place and you're going to have to uh, trust in the Lord. And one thing that this prophecy Brother Bernard shared was hide the word of God in your heart. Because there's going to be a famine of his word and his presence. See, we're not going to be able to come to church like we normally do on Sundays and midweek services and worship God freely and openly because uh, it's going to be dangerous. And there's going to be shootings. There's going to be persecutions. And the church is going to be driven underground. It may be that you have to have church in your house with your family. So make sure that while you're preparing that you keep a Bible handy so that you can have devotions and you lead your family in prayer. And when it gets dark and when it really seems uh, hopeless and when it really feels like uh, you don't know how you're going to face the day, much less tomorrow, lend yourself to prayer. Lend yourself to prayer. I think fasting may not be a problem for a lot of us because with a food shortage, Amen. Food is going to be scarce. So if you don't prepare now with some shelf-stable items, there ain't going to be anything for you to eat. So just by natural course, you're going to have to fast. But you're going to need to have a Bible, and you're going to need to lead your family in prayer. And you're going to need to humble yourself before God and repent and seek Him like never before. And when all of this is done, and the nation has been brought to her knees... God is going to bring us into the greatest revival in the history of mankind. Amen. So God is going to use you. And, and the best is yet to come. But we're going to have to go through some stuff before that revival hits America and before it hits our world. And so my message to you today is prepare yourself. Make sure that your personal walk and relationship with God is locked down tight. It's solidified. Amen. Get serious about living for God. Start planning and making some preparations for you and your family of how you're going to get through this period of darkness. I don't know if it's a month, two months, six months, a year. I don't know. I don't know. And the Holy Ghost hasn't told anybody that as far as I'm aware. He just said that we're going into a period of darkness. Prepare yourselves. Don't give place to fear. Amen. God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Trust God, prepare yourselves now, and let God use you. Amen.
in this end time revival. God bless you.